will now call this meeting of May the 13th, 2019 of the Fayette County Area Planning Commission to order. Please join me in the pledge to the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Ruby Seiler. Ruby is unable to be here. She's ill. Leota. Present. Brian. Here. Ed Harold. Here. Gary Naylor. Present. Kay Riker. Peyton. Chad Frank. Here. Bill Mackey. Here. Stephanie McCann. Here. Bill McDaniel. Present. And Sanders. Here. And myself. Do have a quorum. Uh, next, uh, the approval of minutes. The February the 11th minutes are not available yet. They will be next month. Mm -hmm. uh, but you should have a copy of the April 8th minutes. If you've had a chance to look at them. I'll make a motion to accept them. Thank you. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the April 8th minutes. Any questions on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. The next item is a update on the comprehensive plan by Anna Duncan. Good evening. My name is Anna Duncan, and I'm proud to represent the Fayette County Foundation. As most of you probably know, um, the Community Foundation is taking a lead on revisiting the comprehensive plan that was written in 2011. Um, comprehensive plans, of course, are supposed to be living documents, but as most people know, they kind of get stuck on a shelf. Bill does a great job making sure that his zoning, land use, and those things are used according to that plan that this board back then adopted, City Council, <coughs> County Council. Um, but it is out of date and so instead of rushing into a new plan we want to review the old plan from 2011 that was adopted the work was done in 2010 so we will go through um, each chapter of the book there'll be probably seven to nine different small groups but everybody will read the comprehensive plan um, and mark their section so if it talks about education if it talks about tourism if it talks about land use and then we'll put it into three buckets. We've done it, and we're doing it right. We haven't done it, and we don't need to do it. Or we haven't done it, and we need to do it. So there are things in the document or in the plan that we've done, and I think that we need to celebrate that. Sometimes we think, oh, we don't have progress, or oh, we haven't done something. But one of the things that we'd like to look at in there is that we wanted a trail. Actually, in the 1969 plan, it was written that we'd like to have a trail. So. A couple decades later, we got a trail, and we're hoping to extend that to the river, but there are some successes in there, and the other thing that we need to look at are things that we want to continue to do. Um, one thing that's not in there is broadband, so a task force will look at that, and we'd like to have four or five people on the task force so it doesn't just fall on Bill or it doesn't just fall on the school system to review all of these different parts. Um, and we'd like to get as many faces maybe that aren't in the same group all the time to come forward. So if you know of anybody that um, has an interest in that, Bill, if I'll hold up the book, it's not a difficult read. Um, a lot of it is maps. So if you're on Bill's section, you would have quite a few, um, you know, where it says we're not going to grow or this is agriculture. Um, there's other sections that say we want to have more festivals. So maybe that becomes a part-time job or look at different things like that. Thank you. Um, the, the plan was revisited in 1996. Um, Bill let me know that. And that was just a review of documents to make sure. But as new people come on the board, maybe you aren't aware that there's a comprehensive plan. And it is on the Fayette Community, um, Carswell Community website. So anybody can go to that and the comprehensive plan. Um, so anybody can read over that. And if any of you are interested, you can let me know. Oh, uh, if you could maybe go through the sections for people who might be watching so they'll have an idea of what to... Uh, Under pressure. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, of course, one of would so be economic the, development. The different different discussions mm -hmm. they can uh, take part in to help us uh, review and go through. Okay. I appreciate not being the only one having to go through this. Yes. Okay. Um, so, of course, economic development is the big one, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, economic development, that's what we need. Well, we need to be strategic about is it industrial development? Is it biotech? And there are people that are working on that, and I think that we need to say that Stant is still here, and Howden is here, and Fayette Tool is hiring some of those things that we can celebrate. There's also early education. There's demographics. We have an influx of certain migration, and we have an outflux of certain migration. Um, housing is a big one. Um, we were a part of the housing plan a year ago. We have a housing shortage. We need apartments, mid-level, and executive housing. I think the realtors will tell you there's actually a housing. You can say the same thing. Um, another part is tourism, quality of life. Um, so when you look at the park system, there's actually eight parks and there's only three full-time employees, so that's a great burden on them, and how can we be more strategic about that? Um, other categories. Um, I think that there's, um, what do we have? Um, I'm gonna have to cheat for you. Yeah, there you go, sorry. Okay, you know, I said, and I had like, there's quality of life, that could be anything such as, you know, the parks, it can be tourism, it can be if we want to have events, yeah, do we want to focus be, on downtown? Yeah, the, uh, are there certain areas which are really bad look and we need to clean up? Because mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, another thing that he goes into it is the accessibility to food. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, uh, you know, there's the land use, economic development, okay, housing, natural resources, utilities, mm -hmm. transportation. There's one that specifically called out was the, uh, okay, okay, and then it called out specific areas that we looked at most closely, such mm -hmm. as the uh, State Route 1, Park Road, Downtown, Neighborhoods, Industrial Park. Right. So one of the things that the Community Foundation looks at is as that group gets together and then a larger group gets together for the next comprehensive plan, let's say 50 to 100 people get together, then that's what we look at grant making to. That's the majority. Mm -hmm. These are the people that have come together so we can put money behind those things. Mm -hmm. It's also easier for um, Diana Wright, when she writes grants, she has to be within a certain time period for that. Um, and it also gives um, each organization, they have their own strategic plan, like Mike Bottomley just finished the utility plan, the parks plan, and pulling all those together. Um, so a lot of departments have already spent money on that, and we just want to pull those together rather than spending a lot of money to have a consultant come in and tell us a great bunch of great ideas, even though we've already done that. Yeah. And the advantage of this is up front, what we'll have is we also have a lot of other data. Mm -hmm. So the more the review we actually have, what we need to focus on, the more data we actually have that's been gathered, mm -hmm. such as between the school corporation and then it was done with the housing, mm -hmm. we're pretty up to date on a lot of the uh, socioeconomic data. Mm -hmm. you know, the, so we'll have these things in hand. It's, the Main uh, Street has gone through and done a downtown how, um, business inventory. And then at the end of this, we're looking at June and July, um, I just recently talked to Kathleen Jasper, and in August, Voices, Community Voices, is going to start listening groups. So they will be getting different groups together and facilitating them to see what they want to do. So it's a good correlation of what's going on, and then hopefully be able to write a comprehensive plan in the fall. Yeah, because with all the other plans that people have done, it's the, uh, the thing that makes a lot of the, well, I don't know if some of you remember when the around 2000 or so, they had what they call the vision plan because I know you're mm -hmm. a commissioner there. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened with this was the reason it's called a commission uh, vision plan. It was didn't, wasn't a comprehensive plan, is because the steering committee took it in a direction where it no longer met the requirements of a comprehensive plan under the Indiana Code. Mm -hmm. And so the so I mean it's good to have a strong steering committee, but if it's too strong, it can really change what you what you really have to accomplish. Mm -hmm for future funding, not through the community foundation, yep. but from outside funding, yep. um, DNR, OCHRA, those type organizations, they have specific guidelines, specific hoops that they want you to jump yep. through. 
And so working with you, then moving yeah. forward, then the city and the county and everybody would try to find somebody that could help us do that. And when these projects are pulled into the uh, these different these different plans, the strategic plans, then we pull them into the comprehensive plan, whether it's as a, we have the rear of the comprehensive plan, what we have is then is by making these part of the comprehensive plan, you now have a legal basis for making a decision based on these plans. Well, the thing with the vision plan was, well, it's nice to make a decision on it, but there isn't a legal basis if someone would have, would have challenged a, a financial decision based on the vision plan. So the uh, comprehensive plan gives you a lot of cover for making your actual decisions, mm -hmm. which is think of it as a uh, yeah as a filter to run through the uh, decisions through mm -hmm. to make sure that it's, it's meeting that and that passes really different types of legal muscles. Well, it helps us too that we don't overextend our utilities. Um, a lot of people we get comments that we need a sidewalk between 30th Street and Walmart. There's actually not a sidewalk north of 27th Street, so it's not really, it's not Walmart's, it's not the land, you know, it's just maybe different kind of planning. So if something with, you know, we plan for them to be on um, Central Avenue all the way up through Park Road, there's park, you know, walking there. So um, it's so that our utilities aren't stretched too thin, it's so that we can network um, with the different counties around us and utilize our services. And so part of it is, for example, when you're looking at your infrastructure, if that is a serious concern to do something with the, uh, you know, safe, safe uh, pedestrian passage mm -hmm. up along Western Avenue, there's other places where you can use to get people up and around and then make use of uh, some of the route there. Mm -hmm. But there's other things that would have to be done, but it's to look at alternatives to that, that can get you right. up there. Mm -hmm. yep. So then that allows you then the funding to try, hopefully access some other funding sources and then to mm -hmm. help you get that sidewalk. Get that sidewalk, yeah. Okay. That's all. You guys don't need to do anything. Not asking for any money, just giving you information. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions for me or Ann about this? You were, okay. you were having an initial meeting. Yes, so we've been uh, approved by Purdue University um, Community Regional Development to come and help facilitate this. They've already been working with Community Voices and Purdue Extension. Um, and so they are gonna give us a date for the next two weeks for all of us to get together and then decide. One thing that I did wanna mention, like maps, that might not be interesting to you, or Wi-Fi. So the reason we're dividing up into groups is so that if you're interested in education, of course, that's the group that you would get on. You wouldn't have to sit through a two hour long meeting. Um, if it's Wi-Fi, you're gonna be able to read the manual and realize it's not in there and then start working on a plan. If there's education, maybe it's more in depth. So that's the reason we're breaking it down into different groups, which is more efficient. You may meet one or two times. You may meet just through conversation, um, emails back and forth, just kind of like a book report. And then um, we will be, I will be documenting all of that and it will go to everybody that's in our group, of course, and then city council, county council, and the commissioners um, and let them know how everybody's doing and when we're meeting and keeping everybody up to date. Okay. You guys have enough meetings. Okay. And yeah. I did, did, did uh, some of the topics were fortuitous at the meeting. I was at this uh, on Friday the, uh, of the spring conference. <coughs> and because of a lot of topics that were really tied into what we're doing right mm -hmm. here with this, such as uh, agri you know, rural, rural economic development, agriculture, mm -hmm. and those and lines. And uh, is Mike Wilcox going to be? He's leading it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Because he's worked with Community Voices and yeah. They already have a lot of data from right. the meetings that yeah. they had mm -hmm. with them. And right. It's just, and they've worked with, um, for the downtown green space, and so yes. it was just a natural fit to hire them to come do it. Plus, the information that they'll gather will help us go ahead and work with a organization that'll help us write the comprehensive plan. Good. Um, Mike already has a lot of knowledge of Fayette yeah. County and Connorsville. He's yeah. been here a lot. So um, just if you look at the growth in Rush <coughs> County, it, it stemmed from their comprehensive plan. Yes. Then they applied for Stellar. Um, probably 90 days ago, um, the mayor took a tremendous amount of slack for saying that they were going to build 75 new houses, apartments, um, entry level, and um, mm -hmm. executive homes. Well, they just landed 250 jobs. So. Sometimes you do have to go out into your uncomfortable zone to be able to have that um, reward at the end, and that's what we're hoping to do.
Thank you guys for your time. Hey, hey thank, thank you very much, Anna. Thank you. Okay. Next on our agenda tonight is public hearings. We do have a petition for special, a couple of special exceptions. Uh, before we start the public hearing, I'd like to read a short version of the rules of procedure for this evening. <coughs> First will be the presentation of the petition. Uh, that will be 20 minutes. Uh, there will be a time allotted then for a remonstrance of 30 minutes. And then the petitioner rebuttal will be allowed five minutes. Greater time may be only be granted if the board waives these rules. People are directed to speak only to the board. No comments from the audience members will be recognized unless they do so at the podium and sign in. Do not repeat what others have said. It will only take time away from others that speak. Uh, if there are a large number of remonstrators who wish to speak, the board may place a time limit on each speaker. Remonstrators may designate one or two persons as their representatives to avoid repetition and to more efficiently use the time. The APC and the BZA have the authority to require additional information and reasonable actions to minimize potential negative effects and ask for additional information. If needed, the APC or the BZA may table the public hearing to request additional information from the petitioner or from the remonst remonstrators or the director. The requested information is the only new information that may be accepted under these rules of procedure. Then following the presentation by the petitioner and the remonstrators, the boards will accept no additional comments from the audience unless answering a question from the board member to a specific person. The APC may table the public hearing if additional information is required. The APC may make a favorable recommendation or an unfavorable recommendation to the BZA. A favorable recommendation may include conditions intended to mitigate possible negative effects of neighboring property. If no motion is seconded or fails to gain to receive a majority of the board, the public hearing is tabled to the next month's meeting. <coughs> the BZA votes to accept the APC motion as it was forwarded, forwarded to the BZA. The BZA may amend the motion, reject the motion, or adopt the motion. If the BZA motion is not seconded or fails to reach a majority of the entire board, that public hearing is then tabled until the following month's BZA meeting. And no new information may be accepted unless requested by either board. Okay. So, with that said, I will sound the gavel and we'll open the public hearing for petition number 14760, Jennifer L. Merrick and K.C. White. Uh, you're up. Um, I have some additional information that might not be included in your paperwork. I have six copies. I don't have enough for everybody. But. These are... It's going over the questions on the form with some additional information added. Okay. All right. Uh, what I will need to do, and this will not take away from your time, is I will need to read this into the record since we didn't get it five days before. Oh, I'm everybody. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's why. It's kind of like my notes, so I don't know. Oh, these are your notes. They're my notes. Oh, this is what you're speaking to. Yes, season. and then oh, within okay. the questions oh, okay. that I have never to mind. answer to, there's some additional information. Okay, all right, never mind. Is that okay? Oh, okay. okay. I misunderstood. Do I need to sign in here? Uh, yes, yeah, please do. want to do is speak to the, speak to the criteria and uh, then the, uh, the points that uh, why or it's 
it isn't going to be an particular negative effect associated with that. And then anything that you're doing to mitigate the potential for a, a negative impact on neighboring property owners. Okay. All right. Time starts at... All right, I'd like to say good evening. My name is Jennifer Merritt. This is my fiance, Casey White. We are here today to ask for a special exception request number five, Assembly Hall and Grounds, and number 42, Public Camp, at our property located at 6537 West County Road 300 South, which is located a few miles southeast of Glenwood. Our property consists of six acres and a two-acre lake and a flat rock creek that runs through our property on the west and south sides. Although the property has a thousand square foot house on it, we will the house will not be utilized in conjunction with these special exception requests. Fayette County has a beautiful landscape that any nature lover would appreciate. We are seeking these special exceptions with the thought that we can bring others to the area and share this beauty. We hope to supplement our income and work towards retirement. Casey and I would like to host five campsites and be allowed to host small events such as weddings, family reunions, company picnics, retreats for Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and church youth groups. We feel that we are capable of doing so without creating a burden on our community or the Fayette County resources. Tonight, we hope you will find us in direct alignment for the requirements of these two special exceptions. We feel our operation will not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare because, number one, for both special exception requests, all patron activity shall be fully self-sufficient. Campers and RVs shall have self-sustaining septic systems, their own water supply, and power. We will not furnish RV or camper dump sites. Tent campers shall also understand that campsites are considered primitive meaning no potable water or electricity is available. We have a portalet on site that can be used for those without self-sustaining waste utilities. For assemblies and gatherings, the same rules shall apply. At no time, our house septic system or water shall be utilized by any patron. Number two, Mr. Shirk at the Fayette County Health Department has suggested that a portalet capacity be defined by the portalette manufacturer recommendations. Portalette usage is typically rated at a capacity of 100 people for every four hours. We are requesting to host five campsites, so our current portalette would be sufficient with regular pumping and cleaning. If we are allowed to host gatherings, we shall only book at a rate that our portalette is capable of handling, which will be based on the ratio of 100 people for four hours. Any other event over this capacity will be denied until we can secure another portalet. Number three, fire rings shall be provided for each campsite. Compliance to the Indiana open burning law shall be upheld and enforced. Number four, leave no trace is our expectation. All trash and refuse shall be carried off site by our guests. We shall not be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purposes already permitted, nor substantially diminish and impair property values within the neighborhood because, number one, most but not, not all activities will be concentrated to the south and west sides of our property. The back west side of the property is in a deep valley that's not regularly used by our neighboring property owners and is out of sight of their home. The south side of the property has thick vegetation and is also not visible to our neighbors to the south. The north side of our property is predominantly agriculture cropland, and then directly east and northeast are two property owners that have filtered views of our property. Providing more seclusion for these two neighbors will be a high priority for us moving forward. We've already called 811. They've already visited and marked our property for buried lines as we begin to discuss screening opportunities. <coughs> Number two, quiet hours shall be enforced and mimic Indiana State Park quiet hours, but instead we will start one hour earlier at 10 p.m. and run to 7 a.m. Number three, amplified sounds such as music, karaoke, or et cetera will be discouraged and volume will be subject to the property owner's discretion. If approved by KCNI, time shall be contained from noon to six. 
except for the exchange of wedding vows by the creek, and time shall be restricted to the above-mentioned quiet hours of 10 to 7. Number four, generator use will be restricted during quiet hours unless the generator is a whisper unit, which would be defined as one that cannot be heard from a distance of 50 feet. Number five, four-wheelers and dirt bikes shall not be permitted in conjunction with either special exception, although we will allow golf carts. Number six, a stake survey, survey will be attained and property lines will be clearly marked to ensure guests know the property boundaries and the area available to them. Number seven, Casey and I will be on site to greet patrons for the duration, it, we will be on site to greet them and for the duration of most activities. This will help ensure our, rule, our rules and public local laws are adhered to. Should patrons become unruly, they will be asked to leave. Should further assistance be required, local authorities shall be contacted to assist. Putting in a landline to assure connect connectivity will not be an issue. 811 has already marked lines for Frontier Communications as our service provider. We shall not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding properties for uses permitted in the district because the proposed use will not severely alter the landscape or appeal of this already residential area. Any changes made to our property will be in line with the general residential use. Describe how adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary facilities have been or are being provided. It's number one for utilities. Campsites will be considered primitive, so no electrical service will be provided. Existing lights on the property already in use will provide security lighting. For assemblies and gatherings, no electrical services will be provided. Similarly, no patrons will be allowed to use our residential propane gas. <coughs> number two, access roads. We sit approximately three miles off of State Road 44. Columbia Road and 650 North, also known as Tower Road, provides access off of State Road 44 with adequate width for camper and RV passage. Sources indicate this road is also scheduled to be repaved this year. This will provide better access from the south as well. <coughs> County Road 300 South is also available, but possibly less desired due to its hilly nature. We do have Amish buggies in the area, and we will ensure guests are aware of this concern prior to their arrival. No parking on the road shall be permitted at any time. Number three, drainage. RV and camper pads will be made of gravel and will not impede drainage. Camping areas shall be closed as necessary during periods of excessive rain and or flood due to safety concerns. Number four, other necessary facilities. All patrons will have access to our house, basement, <coughs> and porch in the event of severe weather presents. The basement and porch are accessible at all times and centrally located on our property. Describe how adequate measures have been or will be taken to provide ingress or egress so designed as to minimize traffic congestion in the public streets. By viewing our site plan, you can see our existing driveway provides two entrances and exits from our property. One onto 300 South and the other on the 650 North and Columbia Road. These entrances, provide, entrances and exits provide opportunity to tra for traffic to quickly flow north, south, or west. We do not anticipate adding any traffic congestion due to only having five campsites that would not likely all would be leaving or coming at the same time. Assemblies and gatherings will be held to smaller numbers due to the aforementioned restrictions of port let facilities. There's minimal traffic on these county roads and the ingress or egress of our gathering should be minimal traffic, it ha should have minimal impact and, and last for a very short duration. Describe how the establishment, maintenance, or operation of the special exception will not contravene the principles of reinvestment, revitalization, and the avoidance of unintended co consequences as set forth in the Fayette County Comprehensive Plan. Number one, we, ha we are familiar with the Fayette County Comprehensive Plan, and we want to productively contribute to the county. 
Both special exception requests would be considered rural economic development that is suitable and compliant with the comprehensive plan. Number two, should, a, should our establishment be dissolved, the property in question will not be physically altered in a manner that will create a hindrance to the local community. Number three, we are not pulling business or creating an empty building from an existing business district. And the following, number four, is taken directly from the Fayette County Comprehensive Plan. A, local water resources are outstanding assets that should be protected and shared. And then B, economic development, global trends have permanently altered our local economy. While the industrial sector is still important, we must build and promote other assets such as quality of life and tourism. Improving quality of life is economic development and increasing amenities for community <coughs> res residents will also boost tourism offerings. Casey and I have a beautiful water source to share. We feel we could draw others to the vicinity and we intend to promote other entities in the area. As an example, the Mary Gray Bird Sanctuary appeals to bird watchers and hikers. Young and old would enjoy riding the Whitewater Valley Railroad. Golfers can do tea time at the Willow Brook Country Club. Horse riding is available in Laurel at Salt Creek Ranch, and everyone can find something that they enjoy at Fayette County's historic Metamora. In closing, we have shown ourselves to be courteous and helpful to our neighbors over the last three years. Our lifestyle is not conducive to partying, being loud, or inviting common nuisances to our area. Perhaps that is what comes to mind for some when you say the word campground, but for our, our campsites, we wish to sell our guests the product of peace and quiet. KOA Campgrounds of America is the world's largest system of privately held campgrounds. They note camping has a number of physical and mental benefits for young and old, such as providing stress reduction, relationship building, physical fitness, state of being unplugged, and a time for connecting with nature. Weddings, reunions, and gatherings bring people together. Casey and I are here tonight asking for an opportunity to chase our American dream. We feel we are in compliance with the special exception requirements for the public camp and an assembly hall and grounds, and that these exceptions fit well within the Fayette County Comprehensive Plan. We ask for your approval and thank you for your time. Okay, is there anybody here who would like to speak in remonstrance to this petition? Yes, sir. Is there anyone here who wants to speak? Let me sign in. Yes, please. Say if you don't sign in, you won't get paid. Okay. <laughs> Dwight collected on the way out. <laughs> my name is Leanne Robinson. <clears throat> uh, my husband Jim and I own a tree farm that is catty cornered from the property that the Jennifer and Casey are asking um, to have made into a campground. Bill, do they have? what I gave you. Yes, I gave that to everyone. Yes, okay. the petition and what you're reading. Okay. So you have in front of you a petition that yes. the neighbors put together to uh, address some of our concerns. Yes. Uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm only speaking to the uh, concerns that are here and there may be other neighbors that have something they want to say as well. So, um, I don't think I need to read this to you unless there are questions that you have, and I'll be glad to go over these with you, what our concerns are. Uh, does anybody want me to specifically address these concerns item by item? I think it would be beneficial because we do have people who... Uh, don't have a copy of this? Well, actually, watch this on television. Okay, that's fine. And this Mr. Mossberg, it was at home, he'd be watching it on live streaming because okay. these are live streamed. Okay. 
Um, we, the undersigned, this is a petition from area residents to stop the development of a campground and event center at 6537 West County Road 300 South Glenwood, Indiana 46133. Uh, we, the undersigned, are signing this petition to let the area planning director and board members know that we do not want a campground or event center at the above mentioned address for many reasons, some of which are as follows. Number one, all areas abutting and near this address are farming and residential. There are no business entities in this neighborhood at this time and have not been. Number two, we are not interested in having movement in and out on our roads that are, are at best in fair condition by large camping trailers hauled by trucks. These can degrade our roads even more. Our roads have not been repaved for many years. The roads in this area, especially County Road 300 South, are very narrow. We also currently have several Amish families that use 300 South with their buggies. This is a safety issue for all of us, and we spoke directly with the Amish uh, folks down the road, and they are concerned about this and have signed the petition. Number three, we are not interested in having people come to publicly camp or have events in our neighborhood that we and the owners do not know or have knowledge of their character or personal history with law enforcement. Drugs changing hands could become problematic in a public campground or event center. And we all know uh, in the neighborhood that that has occurred, not at that address, but in the area. Number four, we are not interested in having a business that brings people to party and play loudly. That could disturb the quiet surroundings of this neighborhood. The current owners are motorcycle riders and in the past others with motorcycles have been encouraged to come to this address. Number five, we are not interested in having camping or events that can bring excessive trash and pollution to our lands and water. Number six, we are not interested in having lights that will be on at night, disturbing the dark and quiet of our area. And I will tell you that the current lighting that is on this area um, is dim. Number seven, we have animals, both farm and domestic, and I should have added, and wild, that can be frightened and harmed by strangers and what they bring as they camp and have events. Cell phone service in our area is non-existent more often than not. In case of an emergency, there is no way to contact emergency and or law enforcement without a landline phone. The above property does not have such a phone service at this point in time. Number nine, currently the above address has no potable water. Water is either brought in or pumped from the lake. This address does not have a septic system. Number 10, the area upon which the events and camping would occur has limited space. If you've not seen the property, I encourage you to do so. If trailers and trucks are brought in, there would be little room for accompanying cars and other vehicles. So if you have a wedding and there are 50 people come and two come per car, that's 25 cars and there is not sufficient space in this area to park 25 cars, especially in view of the fact they said they will not be parking on the road. Uh, for large events such as weddings and other parties, parking space is very limited. Parking on the roads in this area is dangerous. <laughs> People do not observe speed limits, and we have a blind curve at the corner of Columbia Road and 300 South. And number 10, there is a potential to devalue our properties because of some of the above mentioned problems. Um, there were some things also that I noted when um, she was speaking about uh, if there are problems that occur they would call, they would, they would um, ask the people to leave the campground. 
but we all know from living in this area that oftentimes if we've had problems because there is basically one deputy on duty during night hours and such, it's very difficult at times to get them to respond. And we have had to wait hours before when we have asked for one to arrive. Um, the other concern that I've heard mentioned is will this be grandfathered? So if, if the uh, variance is, is given to them and then they decide to sell the property, does that mean that the next people coming in will have the opportunity then to do the very same thing, which is a big concern for all of us. Thank you. I appreciate your listening and others here may have some. All right, so we won't take it against anybody else's. I'll, I will respond to the last one about the, uh, the grandfathering. Now, the special exceptions, they can be either temporary or they can be permanent. Now, the language that can be used on the provisions of if either use is actually approved can be that with the understanding with the, uh, with the petitioners that upon the season of the, with the sale or the season of the current activity, it's gone, poof. So that can be part of any actual uh, motion that might be a, that could be attached to it if they if the board so decide that it's something they would uh, feel they can uh, can approve. So <clears throat> okay. Gentlemen, my name is George Thomas Burke. <laughs> Grab those before they uh, run the rest of the way from you. I have to apologize. I can't hear very oh, well. Okay, well, I just. Mentioning glasses can't But uh, my friend here, Mr. Mossberg, gave us a map in case you haven't had a chance to go out there and see the pond. <clears throat> and I will show you, and I'll take it down on past me. This is my house here. I own all this up to the pond. Mm -hmm. There's only about five, or about maybe 10 or 15 feet where they can park a trailer. And all the rest in this house is right straight across the road. You can look at that, and you can pass that around. That's what they got. I'm a, I'm worried about if they have the kids, and they come right across five feet into my property. Which the creek runs right behind it, waterfalls and stuff. And uh, if they get hurt, you know, it's on my property. There's no fence there to separate. And we have a lot of kids out there on that street. There's a lot of kids, and like I said, if they have motorcycles going up there. I'm sure they're not going to be going 25, 30 mile an hour, even though it is posted. So that's really all I have to say strictly against this. Thank you. Hey, Justin, can you pull up on the board? I have a backup. Oh. <laughs> West County Road, 300 South. Or a Columbia Road. Anybody else? Yes. <coughs> Raise your hand quicker.
My name's Lena Shellwalter, and I live directly across from the pond. And as far as visibility of the property, I can see it all from my house. I mean, I'm straight across the road. I've lived there 25 years and made it my home. It's always been peaceful and nice out there. It's beautiful property. But it's been my home for 25 years. It's just been their playground for three. <laughs> and everybody, there's never been anybody lived there. It's always been just uh, a summer place for whoever owned it. And there's been five different owners since I've been there. And uh, I just don't want strangers in the area constantly and the racket and the noise and you know when you got campsites you're going to have that and with campsites there's going to be motorcycles a little bit of everything coming in and out and like I say the they're good people but I just don't want it right there on top of me and uh, I won't feel comfortable even sitting on my porch and it's been broken into at least three times over the past few years, and I just simply don't want it there. And the septic system out there is nothing but a, a big barrel filled with gravel, and there's no running water in the house that's drinkable, I don't believe, from what Mr. Harrison and everybody else told me. And I just don't, and I don't want to sit on my porch and look at blue outhouses all over every place. And those um, RVs and things like that, they're not going to be able to stay there long. I realize that, but um, when you put that kind of money in an RV or whatever you're, you're in, and then he said possibly five or six tents when I talked to him on the phone, so you're going to have other campsites, and I can't see lights going out at 10 o'clock. You've raised kids. And have you ever got them to go to bed at 10 o'clock all the time and the lights all be out? I mean, I just don't feel comfortable with the whole thing, and I hope it don't happen. So that's all I have to say. You said broken into. Was that your property? That no, across the street at their at the oh. cabin's been broken into. <coughs> and then the, guy, the last guy that broke in there when Mr. Harrison was there, when Mr. Harrison came down, I found out he was sleeping in my garage or my barn. So, I mean, you know, I just simply don't want it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, my name is Dennis Phelps. I uh, own the property right behind the pond there. Uh, my line runs uh, next to his and Mr. Burke. I love the city of Connersville, but I couldn't wait to get out in the country since I was raised in the country. The country for people like me, you know, is heaven on earth. I worked all my life to, to get this place, to work hard for this place, to improve this place because I love the country. I love its atmosphere. I love the wild animals. I can look out my windows and see wild turkeys, see deer, all things that go along with country life. It's special. I'm the luckiest person on earth to be able to live in the country and enjoy all that nature. And my concern is, what's this going to do to the country life? You know, when you work hard all your life, and your dreams are fulfilled, and you love it, and all of a sudden, strangers come in, it might disrupt that kind of life. And most people who live and move to the country know how hard it takes and how much work it takes and the sacrifices we make. You know, I'm out there <coughs> in the middle of winter, you know, when trying to take care of stuff and animals and stuff, and it is hard work. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth every bit of it. And I'm so blessed to have it. 
and I don't want it to be disturbed. It's my heaven on earth, so to speak. And the only concerns I would have would be that, but also is the flooding out there. If anybody ever been out there <coughs> in the, this last flood, my neighbors can tell you, it's bad. Her poor house got flooded. And the creek uh, is a creek, but it turns into a river in just a very <coughs> short time. And this last March, it turned into a lake. <laughs> and it was bad, and the whole road was closed all the way from the front of my house down past a couple miles because of trees the size of uh, three foot were on the road. And in your zoning thing, it said that, uh, <clears throat> that the campgrounds should have a study made if every hundred year flood would take place. And then, I don't know if that's ever been done for this, but I have seen it. Also it says to take in eyewitnesses and I have seen the water come across the county line road, fill up the pond, and actually flood the place where they're going to put their campsites. I have actually seen that done once. It might have happened only 100 years, but I've seen it. This last time it flooded in March, <clears throat> it come across the road, but it didn't quite get to where, where they were. But it only took one more storm to come through to make that happen. So that's one of my concerns. Is that part of the of it flooding, and also the uh, setback ordinances of 100 feet from the property lines and the 25-yard buffer zone? It's in your zoning on 100-818 and the 20-acre minimum. <coughs> the 20-acre minimum had to be put in there for a reason to get that much land to develop that in the campground. So I would like for the commissioners to take that into consideration on this vote that that 20 acre minimum was put there for a reason and not to be overlooked. I thank you for your attendance and come out and visit our area. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Sir? Yeah. May I ask? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, your property sits to the west? South. Southwest. Southwest. To the it's right behind it. And down below it. Down. Yes. I can't see you. Right there. It's right here. Yes, this room, this is my house. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. And so you do border, your, your line fence borders? Absolutely. Is there a line fence between you two of you? No, sir. Okay. Just the state. Okay. Thank you. I apologize, Bill. I am Crystal Anderson. I am the granddaughter of Robert and Bertha Cummins. Unfortunately, Robert passed away this past August, and I am the now legal owner, as soon as it goes through, of this property. And if you look clear to your far left on the screen, that is our property. 50 acres. My grandparents have owned that for close to 30 years. From there, all the way. All this. Almost all of their property borders ours. <laughs> I, I'm not in favor of this. We have horses, we have dogs, we have cats, and we have plans for cattle. Grandpa has already had issues in the past few years of people coming across the fence line. We have damaged fences. We have seen evidence of people crossing the fence line. Hunting. We do not allow hunting on our, fiel on our fields because we have livestock. We do not appreciate people coming on to our property. And that is a fear and a worry because they can tell them all they want not to go across fence lines, but how are they going to control it? And if we find them, who are we going to call? Because again, like it's been mentioned, there's not a, very much of a presence of law enforcement in the area, unfortunately. That's just the way it is. You know, and if people are looking for things to do while they're camping, what are they going to do? They're going to start taking quads. They're going to start taking motorcycles. They're going to start hiking. But on their little pad of land, which is very beautiful, where are they going to go? They're going to start seeking out into other people's land. And I don't appreciate just anybody that I don't know coming onto my property. I have small children that will be raised on this property. I was raised on this property through most of my life. My grandparents chose this land because it was peaceful and quiet. And everybody around them was very nice and very helpful and very neighborly. And that has remained so. 
you know, up until the last couple of years. And we have very many concerns about the amount of traffic going up and down because we have children and Amish and lots of people, you know, that are in this area that are very quiet. This is definitely out of the norm for what it has been for the last 30 years. The, the roads do not support trailers. You have farmers that go up and down this road. What if happens when you have a farmer with, with a big hay rake or you have a combine that meets in a, one of these campers, one of these big trucks with a camper? What, what are they going to do? Somebody's going to lose out, not a lot, let alone a motorcycle. It's hard to see those motorcycles. What are you going to do when you're a big farmer in a big truck and you can't get over? What are you going to do? And that I would hate for anything to happen to anyone. I love this area. I have grown up in Connersville my entire life, and this is why I have chosen to keep my grandparents' land, because I believe in this area, and I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't want to see any of this land change, because it holds true to being peaceful and quiet, and that's why I want my children to be raised here. My husband, Robert Anderson, also has a few concerns, as he you know, presides in this property all of the time. My, my thing is, and, and I love them to death, I do, they're great people, they're great neighbors, we met them, uh, you know, they're great, very great to the boards that come, when they do come down, but my question, and I guess, being an old, uh, you know, reserve deputy from Marion County, before I got injured off the military base, uh, my problem, I guess, and I look at this and I'm thinking the same thing, Camp Brown on, what, three and a half acres, I don't understand that to begin with but that's probably not my thing because I got to look at this and I'm thinking, what are they going to do? What is there to do? You can't ride a bicycle unless you get out on the country roads. There's nowhere to ride a quad. There's nowhere to, you know, nowadays people, you got them, uh, what do they call them, where you put your quad or your U-Haul trail or whatever they are, you get your quads or whatever. But then you, I ask, what is a quiet time? Okay, for a lot of us out there, we go to bed with the, what we call the chickens or whatever, you know, we go to bed early. Especially you know? when you have small children. Uh, we go to bed early. Uh, how many complaints, if it does passes or whatever, how many complaints do we make until it gets shut down? And if it is approved, and if it does get shut down, and if it's not grandfathered or whatever in, and if they do end up just selling it, and the next person opens it, how many times do we have to keep complaining as owners out there that have farmland and cattle and horses or whatever, till I'm a disabled Marine and I have to do something and take it in my own hands? We lose because cattle, I'm not going to tolerate people out there drunk coming across my fence line, scaring a calf it's about or a cattle about to give birth. Not to mention my horses. So this is the one thing that I don't understand. And that, that lot is hay, so that is a crop. And most of them know good old Bob Cummins when he was alive. That old man would have been here today, and he wouldn't be as polite as I am because this <laughs> is, <laughs> amen. But he was an 82-year-old man full of vinegar, and this is something we don't understand. How do you do it? Because you... Nothing against it, but you can't put something like that in a farm area. You just can't because there's nothing against it. But you don't know what the campers are going to do. Because any time you put alcohol in that environment, something bad's going to happen, people. We can sit on our porch and drink a beer with our friends and family, but we're not going to go out and disrupt our livestock. But when you start having 25, 30 people, 50 people out at an event who has alcohol, you can't control them. And not to and mention, I, and that not to mention if they right do there, come on our property, cats. if they do come on our property, that makes me liable. That makes us liable for their welfare. And we can't afford that. We have children, we have livestock, we have hay to, to take care of. We can't be liable for someone else. I just don't understand the concept. I mean, I understand people wanting to make a living, but out here, I just don't understand the concept for safety-wise and involving people trying to make a living. You know, I can understand if it was 50 acres and they was putting something in the middle of it. I could understand that where it's consumed and it's not bothering everybody around them. But where it borderlines everybody else, that is a problem. And especially for us, 
If we have livestock, we have a problem. And as a mother, another thought that I have as I stand here and I look at that map and I see that large pond, as a mother, if you have children camping, how do you keep them out of that pond? Exactly. How do you keep them out of that pond? Yeah, but I mean, that's, that, that's the only thing I wanted to know, and that was the main question I got is, like I said, if, if we have enough, if the people out in the community, if it does get voted in, God, for whatever reason, um, how many complaints do you shut it down? How many times do we call and call and call? When do you shut it down? Like I said, this was my grandparents chose this land because it was quiet and peaceful, and that's where they wanted to retire. She spent 35 years in Vistion Ford, and she spent an extra six years in that place to build it what it is while my grandfather built that house himself. So, and they built it there because it was quiet and peaceful. There's, I mean, there's a time and a place, but, I mean, actually, it's, I don't see it being a big enough area, my, but, you know, I mean, I love the people, but... I just think that it's too small. A to business aspect, it's not the place for business. And we got too much at hand out there. Okay, but I thank you for your time. It's left if there's anybody no, else no, who wishes to speak. No, no, thank you so much. I just let no, because someone no, else might wish to. <laughs> thank you so much. My name is Gary Lovett. Uh, I was brought, brought up out there from a little kid. And just a few concerns I have about the place, like um, Crystal was saying about the plant, playing in the pond, you know, how you keep kids out of the pond. I've run that creek from one end just about to the other. And that creek depth right there where, you, where you're talking about, it weaves in and out. It's real deep in there. You go down a little bit further. Yeah. His house. I'm sorry, Tom. 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 It's, it's been a long time. <laughs> you get pa right past his house there, and that creek is up over my head. It's got waterfall over there. You can crawl up on there. As a kid, I've done it. You know, if they're gonna bring kids out, they gonna do it. You know, and, and I, I look at things that I did as a kid, and I watch my boy do the same thing. I'm going, boy, I did that before. It's gonna hurt. Quit. <laughs> Another thing is past winter, um, my wood splitter come up missing. I know it has nothing to do with it, but for the 30 years we've been out there, nothing never come up missing. Never had the barn locked. We got a door on the barn, but we never had it locked. And uh, so now it's locked. Um, down the down the uh, creek just a little bit there, there's people that drive across that to get to their home. So if you littering in the creek, Washing your dishes or whatnot, spoon, knife, you know, whatever falls out. You play in the creek, things fall out your pocket. People drive across that, flat tires. You know what flat tires cost. I mean, that's just, I mean, this is just common sense things that, that I bring to the table, you know. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have two more minutes. If there are more people that, that still wish to speak, the board can, uh, the planning commission does have the, uh, they would need to uh, waive the rules and add a certain amount of time if that is desirable. I live on top of the hill, and I've lived there since 1978. And, pardon me, Joyce Hatfield. And my husband wanted to move to Tennessee, and I said, why? This is Tennessee to me. And my son, I raised my son there, and he walked that creek and played in that creek. And all my neighbors, I've watched their children grow up. I've fed their dogs. And I never locked my doors. I've never locked my doors. If my neighbors needed something, they come and got it. Tom Burke come up one night and needed firewood off my front porch. He got it. Nothing was said. Now I don't know who's going to live in my neighborhood. And I don't like it. And if this happens, it's going to ruin the value of my home. It's, I'm going to lose my neighbors that I felt safe and watch their kids grow up, played with their animals. We have a small orchard in our backyard. My deer come through. My rabbits come through. 
It's nature. And if that happens, I will be going to Tennessee. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Okay. And an idea how many more people wish to? One, two? Mine will just take about two minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, how many minutes would you like to uh, waive the rules for and add to the remonstrate time, remonstration time? How many more want to speak? I think we just need to let them speak. All right. Okay. I don't know your retired teacher might take you 10. <laughs> <laughs> Would five be enough? Jimmy, you should know. This two minutes. My name is James Robinson. My wife, my wife and I live at 2976 County Road 650 West. Uh, I began dating my wife. This is not anything to do with our history. In 1964, we dated through high school, we dated through college, and we've lived there for over 20 years. So I have 26 years of knowledge of the property. I can tell you that I have seen water. Uh, the tower is the second highest point in Indiana. When, when it rains out there, I've had water run five acres and rut right away. So that, w w with the speed of that water and people trying to get in and out, it can be a hazard, not to us, but it could be a hazard to those people trying to get into a campground. Um, if you took a 26-foot, a 20-foot, 26-foot, 28-foot camper, and you added on a minimum 15 feet for a uh, uh, truck, you've got 41 feet or more, depending on the camper. The blind curve they're talking about <coughs> on Columbia Road, if you haven't seen it, 46 feet beginning to turn in is a long, it, it is a long piece of equipment to have trying to turn in almost at a 90 and I've been hit on that road mowing my own uh, property uh, in that blind curve I have seen two cars uh, almost in the lake in those 26 years there has been a car in that lake in that 26 years I've seen numerous accidents in that curve on in 26 years um, it is a dangerous place right there they uh, it was said that the road is wide enough on Columbia Road, which would be to the south, uh, uh, on past the property as you would come from the north on 650 West. I would agree that m a fair part of that would be good for a, a camper. But remember, a camper can be eight and a half feet wide. That's the legal limit in Indiana. That's, uh, that's, it's the same width as a semi. So what you'll be doing is you'll be meeting a semi on a county road. And we know that our county roads are degrading, but we also know that that road is going to be paved. But we don't know how often the brush along the side of the roads is going to be taken care of. So who yields? I mean, there's often times the side of the road, the brush is sticking out a pretty good distance, and everybody doesn't, most people don't want to be brushed up against. Sometimes those are bigger tree limbs that don't get cut off. So that, that could cause an accident because it narrows the road. If you've never seen the road, you need to see the road. Uh, it, uh, my understanding, it was 100 people. The facilities could be up for 100 people at the campsite. I know my wife and I used to camp for many years when our son was young. And there would be places we would camp at, and we would call friends or relatives to come with us. So if 100 people invited one person, that would be 200 people. But let's say 100 people don't. So the math becomes, uh, you know, problematic after that. So you could easily have 125 or 150 people. Um, water amplifies sound. If you were ever in the Navy, you know that you whisper across water because the sound travels greater. There's nothing to interfere with the sound. And... Um, a lot of people out there 
depending on, and, and since the uh, lake is circular and there will be not only um, uh, campers but also tents, you know, that, that sound will travel further because it's going across water. Um, I want to say that they are nice people. I agree. I've helped him bust up concrete to put along the back of his property to help him from washing out. Um, he had free access to my garage to borrow tools. I left the door open. If I'm not here, don't worry about it. Go in and get him, bring him back. Um, he's helped me at my place. Fine people. But I can also tell you in the years that we've been there, we've been shot at by people on the, that are on the property they're talking about because they were shooting into a tree. My wife one day came in and said, the bees are really bad out there as she was loading up the trailer. And I was in the house, I walked outside and a guy was shooting at the uh, tree and didn't realize the difference in the elevation. And it's a wonder they didn't, because when I walked out, I knew who I was, I hit the ground. And she said, those, those bees were so close, I hear them just go right past my ear. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But I don't know what's going to happen the next time uh, that if, if you don't have uh, in place that the next owner, there could not be a next owner that turned it into one. Um, the other thing is I've dealt, I have worked with people my whole life. What I expect from people and what I get from people are oftentimes two different things. Behavior is a funny thing. Um, what you think someone will do and what, you, and what they do oftentimes as behavior uh, can often confound and confuse anyone, as you well know. We have a beautiful woods behind our property. We've been shot at on our own property. One year we took down 12 deer stands uh, in the woods in one day. We took down two deer stands less than 100 feet from our house. I don't know what people are going to do for entertainment when they're out there for relaxation. Uh, nothing, no one may ever come on my property. I don't know. But I do hunt. At times I do go out and do target practice. I wouldn't want to hurt anyone. I don't know, that any, you know if anyone's not on my property. We've walked down on our property before and found hunters on the property walking around. I'm telling us it wasn't their property, and they got, they got permission from someone else. And it's easy access. All of, a lot of our properties are easy access from the lake area. Um, so that's some of my concerns, and, and as you well know, those of others. Thank you for your time. Yes, ma'am. I have to run. Every time I get a chance to speak, they tell me to be brief. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm going to be. Uh, my husband and I live at 650 West, Your name? Glenwood, right here, Your name, ma Betty Bell. Uh, we live just right off of 44, first house, before you get to the town. And I'm here to tell you that every motorcycle that comes off of 44 or comes down the hill is not doing 55. <laughs> And if they have to stop in a hurry, it's going to be pretty bad. And we've, Cecil and I have lived, what, 68 years there? 58. 58 years. That's the same house. We've raised our five kids. And everything, our house has been entered 13 times, our garage six times, because it's easy access off the highway. I don't want more people coming in. And I don't think that all motorcyclist people are mean or drunks or any of that but to bring all that traffic and it's going to come down 650 because those other roads are out of the question we've been on all of them and now that those we just found out about the Amish people and you drive down through there I don't drive 55 but I think some people do and some people go faster and there's going to be trouble but that's not why I'm up here I want to ask you a question. The question is, when they reassessed our house, they said that the reason why our taxes went sky high 
was because they built three houses down the road from us. <coughs> that was the, what they told us. What does it mean this is a zoning? What are you going to do with our agriculture? They put it back. They changed their mind and put it back the next year. But meanwhile, we had to pay all that other tax because they took us out of agriculture. We have one acre in amongst all of those farms. But I want to know what it means zoning for me on 650 West if they're going to have a campground down there. The question is, how's it going to change your zoning? Yeah. Your zoning, is, it's still A2 out there as far as the zoning goes. It, uh, it's something people usually confuse is when it says residential on your assessment. That's the land use. The, the, what you get from the assessor's office, that is not the zoning when it says residential. That is actually the use. So it's still an A2 zoning district, and it's still A2 as far as zoning goes. It isn't going to change the zoning to your property to residential. Now, your land use for where your house is at is residential, but it, is not, it is, isn't zoned residential. They, well, they changed our taxes. Yeah, well, what they, what they do is they, 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 base tax, they base the taxes, okay, what they're going to do, how they consider that on the actual use. Because if you look, is that not all farms have everything assessed at the same value. The house, they take that out. Land that's marginal, they take that out. Agricultural land is taxed at a higher rate. So, the, so, it's, it's so the, how did they do that? I changed. You know, they did something like we that. We had residential okay. at our house when we moved there. Okay. Now, what it, what I said is it's zoned agriculture because you can have it. Okay, in agricultural district, okay, single family dwellings are use permitted by right, which means you don't have to have any extra special dispensation from the area plan commission or the zoning. So that anything that is zoned here okay. doesn't have anything no, to no, do no, with no. The, these okay. farm people. Okay. Is it going to change their taxes? I really don't know what's going to happen with people's taxes, man, because it has nothing to do with this. The use is what affects the actual taxes. Okay, it's still an agricultural district. Okay, and the, when they go around to do the assessment, that's what they do and these formulas set by the state of Indiana. So, what so nothing that you guys would do okay. would change it? Nothing right here with this actually changes it because it's actually based on the use. Well, I think her question was the value, the price value of her house. Why did that one up? Well, that, that, I, that I can't answer. Right, that was no, your question. No, the value of the house didn't go up. So what went it, up? It, the, the property tax went up because they said they built three or four houses yeah, on down the road from us. Yeah, in order for your property tax to go up, they had to increase the value yeah. of your house. Yeah. It's based on the value of your house. Okay. And building yeah, houses. Yeah, but my house hadn't changed. Okay. Okay, well, oh. I don't know how it went up. Your payment went up. Well, it, it, like triple. It has a comment. I'm sorry. Okay. Trending. Oh, trending is probably what did it. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's probably, probably, probably the neighborhood rating. <coughs> yeah, but her value of her house or whatever. Well, they changed, they, it. they changed it back <laughs> the next year when yeah. they yeah. had made a mistake. That would make sense, though. Yeah. Yeah, it was trending, but not that much. Right. You want to see it? Do I? Oh, trust me, I've got my hands full of them, too. Okay. So are we ready for the... Remonstration. Okay. I mean, not the remonstration, but the rebuttal. Yeah, rebuttal. Excuse me. Petition to rebuttal. Okay. You have five minutes. I believe, I know some of the board members have been out and seen our property, and I believe it's recommended that you come look at the property. Um, before the meeting so you can see it. Um, a survey was included uh, in my information that it, we will get a state survey to define where the property lines begin and where they end and um, when you are on the property if you see the three-way stop or the, the um, curve that is of concern I mean, maybe we can come back and talk about a three-way stop there and make it safer for everybody. There's the man right there. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. Calls in your ballywick. 
It's my turn. <laughs> I'm glad we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> Right, safe, safety was mentioned multiple times, and safety is a concern for all of us, myself. I have a young son, and I have animals, too. Um, I heard many people mention of security things and issues that have already happened, problems in the area, multiple problems, shoot-in, break-ins, drugs, trespassing. That's, that's already there. I mean, it, it, it's, it's part of living in society and a community. I mean, we have parks and campgrounds already in Fayette County, and they seem to operate successfully. <coughs> and third, I hear their concerns. I understand their concerns. We value the country life. We have other property that is country life, too. We get it. We love it. And we don't want others to come in and throw their trash down, and we want to be responsible. We try to be responsible owners now, and if we have five campsites and small gatherings, we it's everybody else's property we want to respect as well as our own property. We don't want the trouble in, in, in there either. So I, 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 I value their opinions. Um, I understand the country life. I do believe, this in closing, I do believe many of their concerns were addressed in the paperwork already provided, so I won't go through each one, and I'll let that paperwork and let you make those decisions. Thank you. Okay. Close. Yep. Close the discussion for the board members. Public hearing is closed. I can read the staff report. Do a staff report before we do Okay, public hearing is done. Do any of the APC members have questions? I have a question for Bill. Yes. Uh, so with the, the new change in state law for uh, like Airbnb and stuff uh, that just passed this session, uh, which will go into effect in July, mm -hmm. uh, you can rent your, your house out or property out without uh, Having a special exemption now, according to the state law, how does that apply well, here? Well, I th honestly, since it's, it's not a campground, it doesn't fit the definition of a campground. Okay. So I'm con I'm just confused on that. Okay. Well, what uh, they're voluntarily under it as a campground, even though it's under the uh, number of campsites that uh, the state of Indiana regulates and defines as a campground. Now, of course, okay, of course, the Airbnb also has to do with structures. And so the, but I'd have to wait until actually it's signed, it's in effect. And as with the members of the planning, you know, the State Planning Association is we're really also waiting for uh, a full assessment by the attorneys that are associated with the, with the Planning Association. So, yeah, it's the Airbnb laws were concern to the uh, Indiana chapter of the American Planning Association. So, I, like I said, I think it's just really it's going to be limited to the structures because it's that that's what the whole thing was about with the problems with the Airbnb or fees because the, <coughs> the communities that attach fees to communities and not attach fees. And uh, so basically the Airbnb, you know, uh, the state legislation pretty much banned you, banning them out. Preemptive, I should say. Yeah. It was mentioned 20 acre minimum was the current order. Is that accurate? okay for the public and camp of this type? It's actually the uh, five or the six. I think the legal is five. Five for this. The 20 is the other one. This is the public camp, and there's the other pet campgrounds within it. So. You're saying, what did you say now? Okay. It was mentioned, that's well, why I make, that's why I'm He asked me to clarify a point. It was someone, I don't remember who spoke, but someone spoke to the a 20 acre minimum. I'm going to get a clarification on that. Okay. Okay, public camp 42, minimum lot area, five acres. Okay, that's A. Okay. Yep. Accumulative acres. Yep. Yeah, five acres total. 
Mm -hmm. no. That's usable acres. No, it's just total acreage. Okay. It doesn't call out whether or not it's uh, you know, gross or uh, you know, gross acre or uh, the uh, net acreage. Okay, that's the 42, right? Yeah, number 42. Yeah, it's actually five acres. What about the okay. line for the count? Okay. For the assembly. Okay, the assembly. Does it say how many campsites on a five acre lot? No, it does not. Okay. Okay. Assembly Hall and Grounds is actually one acre. And that's because, yeah, and that's probably because a lot of people when they want them, it's actually a structure such as a converted a converted barn. Yeah. So it's a minimum of one acre for Assembly Hall and Grounds. <coughs> one acre for what? Assembly Hall and Grounds is a minimum of a lot acreage of one. One acre. One acre for the Assembly Hall and Grounds. Five acres for the public camp. <laughs> Any other questions? I have uh, a question pertaining to parking. How many uh, do we have designated parking laid out? Uh, uh, they laid out parking, but it hasn't been included with a. I mean, it's a it's a rough site plan that was provided for us. Okay. But uh, you could request, and when the survey is done, that uh, would you actually show up more detailed information on the location of the the parking area. And then also the uh, old campgrounds, if you're so inclined to uh, approve. Okay. The, uh, which is where I got into where you can place conditions mm -hmm. of uh, things that need to be provided okay. prior to anything being able to happen. And I guess I had a question uh, pertaining to, I, I understand their concerns about the, the acreage and, and the size of it and people wondering past property lines and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about line fences, whether that could There's be required. There's no requirement in there for the line fences. Uh, I don't know if this would be one where you could uh, require a left-hand, right-hand rule, but uh, because on those that don't require livestock, mm -hmm. I know that was originally in place, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that would apply, and uh, that, that would be a legal question as whether it would apply. Because for the most part, his left-hand, right-hand rule hasn't really been applied by anybody unless their uh, uh, livestock is involved. Right. Does anybody know how how many, much acres the pond is on that five acres? It says two that? acres here. I don't know. It's approximately, it's approximately two acres. It says four, approximately six acres total with two acres of it. Two acres and, like and the creek runs through it. So I don't know how much you lose with that. So okay. Yeah. Right. Would be less than four. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because if you take the two out plus yes. the creek, it'd be yeah. less yeah. than four. Okay. But like I said, it has to do with the entire size of the lot, just the five acres. It is not. Uh, yeah. That, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yep. Yeah. That. That's it. Sir, I have one more thing I'd like to say. Yes. You were talking about the guns. Gun. The guns, he was talking, Mr. Rosenstein was talking about, about the guns being shot at or out and across from there. My first home I had there was a trailer, small mm -hmm. one, and I had someone at the pond that owned it shooting snakes, and the bullet came through my house and lodged in a cabinet door. And when I got traded it in and brought the new one, Every time I hear a gun, I'm telling you what, it scares you to death. Okay. <coughs> okay, now, any more comments from the board, comments or questions from the board members? What size are the uh, lots that you're dividing it in or finding them? The campsite? The campsite, yes. I don't have them defined as far as size. Maybe they would be limited similar to state. Like the state parks, you, know, you can't have three RVs on one site. We have two tents, but the state parks allow you two tents per site. And we haven't marked out the park. Getting, and we've done the rough draft, yeah. but you know, we've not invested money in you know, the gravel pads and marking them off until we 
Okay. We had we had two friends from South Carolina come in with fifth wheel campers, and they there was plenty of room. We could have put them in multiple places, and been plenty of room for three other yeah. RVs the same size. See, you know, they sit on a circle drive that goes from oh. 300 South to yeah. Columbia Road. And so as you go into their property on 300 South. It's a, a gravel road right now up yeah. to the house that sits there, and then on the back side. You live in the home on the grass. property? No. 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 We, it's a weekend getaway. I mean, we get there as much as we can. Okay. So okay. there would be no one on site? No. Uh, if this gets approved, in order to even do this, we will be there when somebody, there. it will never be unattended. That was going to be my question. If no, it would never be, people would not be allowed to come in unattended. We're not intended in any kind of a pay lake. And as far as the shooting, we don't, we're not having no shooting. And I haven't shot a rifle there since I've been there. Now I shoot a shotgun, but it's, there's no shotgun or no shooting at all. And it's very, very seldom. So the building that's on the property is what you would be leasing out for no, events? No. You're going to yeah. build something? With the, a tent. It would be a tent oh. popped up. The, okay. the house that we have is a thousand square foot. We get out there as much as we can. We'd love to move it out there. We have jobs and I have a child that we're not ready to move. But I want to retire in that house. As far as the events, I, mean, I, I envision small weddings. Somebody wants to come for an hour, they're married by Creekside, and we do pictures, and they're gone. It's very scenic. Very scenic. The events we've had, his family, or uh, work party there, and we had, you know, tents for shade. Currently, I do not, we do not have a shelter house. Eventually, if approved and accepted that we could put a shelter house, Possibly. Right now, it's more like fishing, waiting in the creek, um, you know, tables and, and shade tents, shade tents right now. The house is not any part of Your use. Yes, it's, it's, no. What assurance are we going to have that they are going to be there and keeping things up there? Sorry. Sure. Okay. <coughs> Is there anything in the ordinance? I know we're talking about the five acres and the one acre as far as a buffer zone between neighbors or anything with those? Okay, the what it just has with the uh, okay, the public camp, that's the uh, screen planning, six foot by three foot wide, effective year round between that and then the uh, proper residential There's nothing property. There's between residential house and property line distances or anything? Uh, okay, the setbacks are the, the uh, minimum front yard between that and the actual camping areas that's uh, 100 feet so that'd be uh, no camping no camping site within 100 feet from Columbia Road or 300 the other site and the rear setbacks are all 40 feet on both 40 feet and uh, let, me, let me go back to the assembly area let's see I should have thought about that before this evening. Okay, uh, okay. And the assembly hall on the grounds is actually smaller. It's the uh, minimum front yard for the assembly hall and grounds is, okay, front yard is the standard for the zoning district, which is 50 feet. The uh, side yards are uh, 20 and the rear is 15 feet. So it's uh, less restrictive than the uh, the parking. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, that one right here, the parking, this is determined by the board. Yeah, that's the zoning board. Okay, if that's uh, sufficient. Okay, uh, noise is confined to the premises. Okay, uh, okay, security and structure, and it, that does not actually have a uh, screening requirement, just the campground. But this gets into the discretion of the boards to add conditions for the to the approval.
Any further questions? Comments? There is no septic system on the property at all at this time. Our house has a septic system, but it will not be used for camping or the um, assembly hall. For that, for the camping, it's either they need a self-sustaining RV, or if they're tent camping, we have a portal. And then as far as the assembly hall and grounds, we currently have one portalette, and that's where we discussed where it has 100 people per four hours. Yeah. And I don't, I would have to use that ratio when I schedule events, and I would be erring on the smaller side because I don't anticipate big, big events. If, if somebody wanted to book an event that had 200 people, I'd have to tell them no because they don't have the facilities to handle that number of people. And uh, did you have a uh, maximum number of actual people? Is it going to use it as 100? Since you're well, since you're, would, you're proposing 20 parking spaces, but we could we could have based on that 100 people per four hours. Yeah. We could have 50 people for eight hours. Yeah. Or 25 people, you know, based on that ratio, 100 per four hours. It would mm -hmm. be based off that. So we could have less people for a longer duration of time. Mm -hmm. And okay. then your second... Well, that's just where I'm getting into the, uh, you know, the parking. Because, the park yeah, because it'd be pretty easy to over, as some people pointed out, it'd be pretty yeah. easy to overwhelm the parking capacity. If we are able to get our state survey and define the proper setback, we would know we couldn't park cars over that. But, I mean, my, my concern is, or question, I guess, if, if I have, I think on the map I have like 22 spots. Yeah. We have yeah. room for more spots in that open area. We, I've had a graduation per, for my son, and we've put like three rows in there. If done properly and, and marking mm -hmm. us people and get in and out. But, I mean, if I, and my question is, could, I mean, we have a whole circle drive yeah. that goes around, too, that could we not utilize that? If, if, and, and I don't intend to have hundreds of people there. Mm -hmm. But, okay. so, I mean, I have some questions on the parking. Yeah. To, if, if I need more space, we do have room, and, yeah. but it's still all based on my oh. waste receptacle. All right. Comments now, whatever we're on. Comments. Yeah, yeah comments. Just trying to wrap my brain around and put them all together is the, the issue. That's kind of a, it's a double edged sword for me. Um, one, we're, we're, we are a community that needs to grow. There's people in this room on committees trying to grow Connorsville. And the whole thing I've heard my whole life, and I'm out meeting with senators right now and different legislators on what's going on in our area. And we have killed so many ideas <coughs> by shooting them all down. And we, we shoot down everything. And to me, that drives me insane. Some of the things that we shot down 40 years ago were now haunting us now because we shot it down. At the same time, I look at this, I don't think this is the right property for what you're wanting to do. The one with your circle drive, and Bill can answer this more than me, but you can't block your ingress and egress, because you're going to lose parking there. To me, with four less than four acres with your creek, you put campsites and parking, you take away the scenery you're trying to promote, the nature of the wild. It seems compact to me. Um, property values, I think that's, that's, that's not even an issue. That's, that's a guess. We can't guess what's going to happen to property values. Uh, the traffic on the road, Camp Modot, Amish up there, people go to the campground all the time, there's no problem with it. Um, so things just have to be learned. There's, there's different things that, I guess that's a double-edged sword. But to me, I just don't think it's the right property. With a two-acre pond, if it was a five acres and a bigger buffer, animals, I love my horses next to loud, crazy things, especially when on their backs. I'm desensitizing them. Cows, you don't want it. I get, I get that. Um, I put my horses right next to trains. <laughs> and the engineers blow their horns every time I got one around pen. They know what I'm doing. 
Um, the two acre pond with a creek run through it, I think you lose your what you're trying to create. And as much as I'm pro growth, and I'm looking at all the neighbors here, and I'm as frustrated as anyone, um, I don't think it would be a good good use for an exemption here. Did you come look at the property? I have been out there several times. My uncle just lives right down the road. I've been there all Have you looked around? The I've been all around it. Okay. I have. And I have an excavating background, so I understand how property lines lay and how to put stuff in properly so that it will work. You you can put, you, what I'm afraid is you're going to spend, even if we gave you a special exemption, now this is stuff I don't ever talk about, it's pie in the sky stuff. If we gave you the special exemption, you put in $30,000 worth of stone. I know the water that comes through there, you lost it all. You're going to be spending your wills putting stone back. It won't stay. No. And that water's not come over that property. It runs around that creek, but it has not come over that property. Yeah. I've been there three years, and this is the worst. <laughs> Dennis will tell you. Dennis will tell you. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Before you were there. Well, <laughs> but my, my concern is I just don't think it's the right property because I don't think there's enough space. I love it. It's beautiful down there. I absolutely love the view. But you have parking and camping and events. With only 25 spots, they're going to be parking on the roads. There's nowhere else to park. Now, okay, the recommendations will have to be made for each separate lease as there's two special exceptions. So the first one will be made with regards to special exception five, the assembly of uh, hall and grounds. And the second will be made for the uh, 42, which is the public. Okay, Another question that I just yeah, sure. thought of on the on the five on the assembly hall and grounds as far as requirements, if we were to say yes to a, a favorable recommendation, can we set a limit to the number of people that can be there? Are we allowed to uh, make that recommendation with? I believe it would be within the authority of the area planning commission and the zoning board to set a maximum number. Say that's 50 occupants. As a that would be, yeah, that would Absolutely. certainly be, I believe, and, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, would be within their purview of accept. Uh, within, with their discretion. Yes. Right. All right. I think we're looking at this as, as one thing instead of two. Like, I feel like camping is one thing, events are a, a separate thing. I don't know. There might be some overlap where somebody would stay the night if they had an event, but I don't think it's a guarantee that just because you spend your afternoon there getting married means you're going to stay the night. And if you only have 50 people there for a couple of hours, uh, there's no electricity for people, so they're not going to be there after dark unless they're camping and you only have five sites. I don't know how many people you can fit into five RVs, but, I mean, there's space. You're limited by the space mm -hmm. of a RV on how many people that you can have there anyway. Um, unless you want to be there after dark with no electricity mm -hmm. or running water or... Yes. So correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but so then we can, we'll address both exceptions separately? Correct. Mm -hmm. We can send a favorable for one but not the other, or yep. a favorable for both, or, or a exactly. non-favorable yep. for Absolutely. Both. Okay. Yep. One or the other, or both one way or the other. Yep. Well, my biggest, one comment that I might have, uh, Ed, I, I've grown up in that area. I, I spent most of my life in that area. And um, we've got a, I believe, another situation in Orange Township that we, that's been down there for events that was created in ag area, quiet area. Um, I don't know that anything's went wrong down there in Orange Township for, with that facility. Um, I'm, I too am with Chad, uh, as far as, I want growth. The only way that we're going to get economically out of the problems that we have is for us to grow economically, but I'm not sure this is the property for a campsite. Um, I'm not so sure that it wouldn't work for events. Uh, from uh, time to time events uh, just because there is another event site down in Orange Township that's working just fine in an ag area 
as most of you have put that, that that is an ag area. Um, it's no different than the other site. You're, you're comparing apples and oranges with the Sorry. beaver party barn and this. Uh, I, I don't think so. When, when, yes, you when, when, are. Yes, you are. It's the only property on that road. And it's a, this, <laughs> this, this is what you're looking at. This is at. out of order. Well, that's, that's all right. right. That's all right. <laughs> so you need looking. a little out of the order here. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something about conference, too. That stone quarry is 17 feet deep. 13. And it's too cold to be in. And Nobody swim. ever could swim in that thing. And also, you look at the average age of the neighbors around, we don't need that ever. That's kind of aggravation. We are the community right here. <coughs> we need a motion. Okay. Motion. I mean, we could stay here all night and talk about this and disagree and argue about it. This this group here is charged with making a recommendation to the BZA. I think we've heard a full explanation from both sides. I think we all have a good... <clears throat> I've always been a person that believes you should be able to do whatever you want to on your property, as long as it's not keeping your neighbors from enjoying their property. And that's what, as Chad said, that's where we are right here. We've heard the testimony. We've heard the remonstrance. We've heard the petitioner. I think we're ready for a motion. Okay, number five. Is there a motion? For, you're asking a motion for a favorable yeah, number five. or a motion for anything? It can be either a favorable, and this will be a recommendation to the BZA. They will make the final determination, as we read in the beginning. Yeah. It will either be favorable unfavorable or no recommendation. I make a recommendation for unfavorable. I beg your pardon? Unfavorable. Okay, we have a motion for an unfavorable recommendation. Is there a second? For five. For five. five which is the assembly. 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 <coughs> and Chad's motion was for both. He no. made a unfavorable recommendation for five and four. Or yeah, just for one, 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 at one, at one at a time. Then it's not. It's unfavorable. Who made the second? I have not no. had a second yet. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Motion dies for lack of a second. Is there another motion? I would make a motion that um, we would table this with a request of a planned parking, more planned parking, and um, a definite a, plan for a definite plan definite with parking. parking plan, okay. and the number of people, here. and number of people. Um, that allowed. would be allowed. I would second that motion. Okay, so the motion is we table this and wait and ask for a definite parking plan with a definite number of people allowed. Okay. And seconded by Brian. We have a motion and a second. Is there a question on the motion? Yeah. Let's do a roll call. Ruby's not here. Um, Leota? Yes. Brian? Yes. Ed? Yes. Gary Naylor? Yes. Chad Frank? No. Just a simple fact that, as Ed said earlier, you don't want to make your neighbors mad. Bill Mackey? Yes. Stephanie McCann? Yes. And that's all that came up. Okay, so, so the okay special exception number five for the assembly hall and grounds is tabled until next month with a uh, 
you know, a, a site plan, detailed site plan for the parking. And then also a specification on the number, maximum number of people that you'll accept. Okay, next is the motion for the public hearing. Uh, I would make a motion to send an unfavorable recommendation for the campsite. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second for an unfavorable recommendation. We have a For an unfavorable for 42 campsite. Any questions on the motion? Okay, we're going to vote. Leota King? Now am I voting yes or no? I'm You're voting. voting. You're voting. A yes vote is an unfavorable yes. recommendation. Um, Brian? No. Ed? Yes. Gary Naylor? Yes. Chad Frank? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Stephanie McCann? Yes. Okay. So motion carried. Yeah, by five, <coughs> by five to two. Okay, all we needed was five for the, uh, okay, for the majority, yeah, so we needed the five. No, is a, no, because the no was both. Well, that's right, yeah, Gary, yeah, six to one, my mistake. Six to one. Yeah. Six to one. Okay. So then with the zoning board is, they will not uh, hold a hearing or a vote on number five, special exception number five for the assembly hall and grounds. The only one that the zoning board will hear will be for the uh, campground because it received a uh, motion with the, the votes to, to forward it. So we have one table and then one forward. Okay. <laughs> Okay, director's report. Is there any questions on the director's report? One reason for the large number of uh, permits for class one uses is that's what we classify the classified the uh, solar projects for the city of Connorsville. I think there are 12 of them so far. I think they have one more to do. So, but, uh, yeah. Would you like a motion to accept it? Yes, please. Uh, I move that we accept the uh, director's report. Okay, we have a motion to accept the director's report. Is there a second? I'll second that. I have a second. Thank you. Stephanie. <clears throat> Motion made and seconded to accept the director's report. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Our next meeting will be June the 10th. Nothing further on the agenda. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned.
<laughs> now call the May 13th, May 13th BTA meeting to order. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Can you call the roll call, please? Certainly. Carrie Steele? Here. Bill Crawford? Here. James Fisher? Here. Ruby Seiler? Leota? Here. Bill McDaniel? Present. Ann Sanders? Here. And myself. Yeah. There's the All right. Okay. First off, before we start the meeting, I'd ask that. Anybody that has a cell phone, please turn it off or at least uh, silence it uh, so we don't have any interruptions during the meeting. Thank you. And then uh, we got the minutes. approval of the minutes from the February 11th, 2000. Actually, April 8th. Oh. Is the only one we have yeah. now. All right. Sorry. We got the approval of the minutes for April 8th, 2019 BZA meeting. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, we got a motion made and properly seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Do I, do I use that whole petition number for the camping part two? Yep. Okay. Yep, just read right. the whole thing off. Okay. We got petition number 14,760, 14, and petitioner is Jennifer Merrick. And Casey White, and the address is 6537 West County Road, 300 South Glenwood, Indiana. They're petitioning for a couple things. One of them was tabled at the last meeting, so we won't be discussing the assembly hall grounds. We want to discuss the special exception 42, the public camp to allow camping at the site, and uh, we were all here. All the board members were here and present for the previous meeting and heard all the testimony. And if there's no one objects, we can go ahead and accept that testimony and we won't have to go through the whole process yeah. over again. Yeah. Part of the proceedings of the uh, zoning board, we can adopt that if the both the petitioners and then also the remonstrators would agree because otherwise we could be here another two hours because everything that was said at the previous meeting will be taken into consideration. And that's all in the records. Yeah. So, so if you would like to do that, we can then, uh, uh, I guess we could go then to the uh, of the discussion for the board members and questions on the board members. To the, uh, oh, to the remonstrators and then also the... Uh, but, yeah. but have, I was going to say, but have they yeah. said whether or not they're... Yeah, that, that would be the case if they do. All right. So... so if there's anyone that objects to it, we'll go through the whole process over again. That said, we'll accept it as presented. Okay, does nobody objects to that idea? Right. Does that mean it? Like, okay, everything, <laughs> everything that was said at yeah. the last meeting will then become part of the minutes and the proceedings for this meeting. So every comment that was made by yourselves, every comment that was made by the... Uh, Remonstrators who object to the uh, proposed special exception. Basically, we're just taking the yeah. conversations and not repeating them. But anyway, yes, yeah, yeah, because if everyone is amenable yeah. to that, we can adopt that as part of these. It will require a vote on the part of the, uh, the zoning board. And with the remonstrators, I know Mrs. Robinson, you felt pretty strongly, and also you, uh, Mrs. Showalter. So. Do they have an opportunity to add to it? Okay. okay. And what it, what would happen would be then, since if you agree and you, you know, and you don't object to that, the board members will adopt that. Everything that was said previously at the Area Plan Commission. Then it would go straight to the part where then they have a discussion and then they can ask questions of the members. And uh, I 
think perhaps then is uh, but it closes their public meeting yeah. for us essentially there's no open public meeting yeah. we could ask questions but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be like before where you came up and yeah. everybody got to say yeah. we just take everything that was said the first time that's yeah. the only difference and, uh, but if you if the board members would like then to allow people if they do have a query as part of the conversation to ask a question but it's board. not an open public exactly. hearing. Yes, yeah. because the public hearing would have already been closed yeah. as part of but the yeah, so if they have, if they have questions for clarification, uh, you'll have questions for the both petitioner and then also some of the specific remonstrators. Okay, so I'll take it there's no... Craig, you say you want to go home watch TV? No, I know you can hear me that well. <laughs> we can hear you very well, sir. Uh, I said we can hear you very well, yeah. sir. Well, Craig, at times I do. It's just when there's the background noise. <laughs> okay, so there's no objections to taking the testimony as presented? Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. I think we need a formal vote okay. to adopt All right. the proceedings. Um, Take a roll call on adopting the uh, testimony as presented. Carrie Steele? Yes. Bill Crawford? Yes. James Fisher? Yes. Leota? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. All right. So I guess that opens up to discussion among board members. Board and if you have any specific questions for uh, the um, petitioners and also if there's anything that any of the board members have mentioned. My uh, question is really more about you, uh, to you, about procedure. Um, to me, it seems uh, peculiar to take the special exceptions separately. Well, could we, at this point, I mean, I know we can't go forward with what they tabled, mm -hmm. but okay. I'm not clear as to why we are voting well. on a special exception that may change depending on their site plan. Yeah. Well, that, that's why we're not voting on the, uh, you know, the assembly use, because that was tabled. Uh, the, uh, so, of course, the only one we're actually going to discuss and consider, well, next month will be the what happens with the plan commission. That's when the, uh, you know, the first one, the assembly use, would come before the uh, BZA. Of course, having them vote separately is because they're two discrete uh, special exceptions. So you should consider them separately because there's different site requirements and then different. Uh, so but wouldn't the site the site plan potentially the changes or additions in the site plan wouldn't it substantially potentially substantially change the special exception that we're looking at right now? We could we could possibly yeah. table it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, reason. because since it's going to be tabled anyway, so if you'd feel more comfortable, members of the zoning board would feel more comfortable waiting until then to actually vote on it so to table it until you see what the site plan is as far as changes with the parking because you'll need to see that anyway and that could very well also affect then what's going to happen for the uh, sites and the locations for the uh, for the camping i mean we table the vote um on this part of the or this special exception so 42 the, or 42 so that we're voting on both things at the same time with the same site plan, with the understanding that the public hearing is going to Okay. Well, you may wish to then, if the site plan has changed, you may then you probably want the to reopen plan. the yes, public could, hearing. Yeah. yeah you, but we would probably want to uh, redo, redo it. Open the, yeah. Okay. Say that again. I move that we table the vote for the special exception on 42 because the site plan could potentially change um, due to the requirements asked by APC's tabling of the yep. special exception five. Yeah, yeah. Basically waiting for the uh, revised site plan, right. revised and more detailed okay. site plan. Let me make sure I got it down right. Yep. And since I'm sure everybody else is going to be here in, in June. We have a motion, but we don't have it second. I'll second it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. i tell you what, I don't know if everybody else is out in the cold as much as I am, 
Okay. But how he wasn't here and a couple others they, wasn't they, here. They were in the back. They were in the back watching. Right. There's televisions in the back. Oh, okay. That's yeah. where I'm kind of blinded. Yeah. I thought yeah. they had passed the, yeah. Yeah. the no, deal really. on the campsite. Yeah. And not passed it. Yeah, but they, they've been back there yeah, they, voted, they voted on it. Yeah. No, all they did was recommend to us that we don't approve it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's all that they do. They make the recommendation. The authority to approve is strictly the zoning board. Yes, sir. So I guess my whole thing is we all came down. We were here, been here half the night, and we're doing all this again because we got to wait till everybody goes out there and sees. No, if it, it can be done in the first place. No, no. What they're waiting for is the area plan commission asked related to the, the first special exception. The Area Plan Commission asked for a detailed site plan for the parking. That was part of the motion on Mr. Naylor's part. So that cannot be reheard. That won't, won't be until next month for that special exception for, so number, for, for, number, for the first one, number five, special exception number five. So there is going to be a public hearing regardless on the first one next month because it was tabled by the Area Plan Commission. Now, what uh, Ms. Steele has requested, the motion, was to, since the site plan is going to change from the request to the petitioner for the parking plan, it would be basically more comfortable with hearing everything at one time because there's po possible changes to the way they might vote on this issue <coughs> related to the site plan. For the camping as well. For the camping as well. They're waiting. They would like to see the actual revised site plan, parking plan for that. What I'm worried about, the main reason I asked to table it, just as a, the reason I asked to table it was Area Planning Commission, when they tabled the first, there's two things under consideration. When they tabled the first one, we can't hear it tonight. Okay, you say the Area Complain, when you said you want to see what the Area Planning Commission said, but my question about the Area Planning Commission don't live in our neighborhood. Well, they were the they were the meeting before. I'm just trying to explain why we're here. I mean, so they were the meeting before. When they tabled it, we can't hear it tonight. Well, I just, ma'am, and I don't mean to be abrupt, but I just feel like then we wasted our time being in here, voicing our opinions to you, be here. This was this is the problem. This is the process. There was an open hearing, and the Area Planning Commission decided to wait another month. That really, and I decided to wait another month on the second part. Because if we had approved tonight, if we had, we sir, please let me finish me. what I'm saying, please. Okay. Okay. If I, if we had approved the second part tonight, because we can approve or deny regardless of what the area plan commission sends to us. So if we had approved that tonight, the camping section, not saying we would have, but we could have, even if we didn't approve it tonight. And they went back and they redid their site plan and all of our concerns were magically taken care of or they were completely proved to be accurate. We don't know how that site plan may or may not change. And, and the other so part that of, is why, why vote on something tonight that could potentially change. And, and no, you did not waste your time because what you had to say at the previous meeting it, it is in part work. of the public record and will yeah. be taken in consideration so with the plan commission and the zoning and board. Yes. Yes. Everything you said, Everything you said this evening here. is still part of the public record. Okay, so and we'll we can't be... make it in June, it still stays in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you know how the weather yeah. is. So. Yeah, because yeah, because you gotta make hay when you get Yeah, make because hay. all that happened is the public hearing was continued. So you had the information was there. Okay. So everything you said tonight is still valid and still right. accepted. I just that's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. That's the main thing. Yes, sir. Mr. I would like to know why two people can control the rest of us. What do you mean two people? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> You're got, you got to go on where to let them do what they want to do, or we don't get what we want. Okay. I think the majority rules, doesn't it? No. no. It we, have, we have codes yeah. to go by and hey, laws the whole in order community to. Are we in the United tonight. States? Mm -hmm. That was a whole community out there was here, and we don't want it. That's yeah. our homes. They can go home. That's right. Yeah. That's, what, that's my point. Well, All right, hold on, hold on. Hey, I, we're not going on with the discussion on that part. I understand. I, I understand what you're saying, okay. but we, we go through the process. We have a set plan, and it's voted into yeah. ordinance by the Fayette County, and that's just the, the process. 
and that process gave all of you a right to stand up here and speak, gave them a right to stand up here and speak, and now this board has to vote on that based on that, that, that uh, description and that testimony. Yeah, the, the information that they are given by the petitioner is weighed as are your comments are weighed. For sure. But it is, yeah. So it's, there's things that they have to consider more than just the opinion of a lot of people. They have to consider, did they meet the legal requirements of the code? That's what, that's what the zoning board is legally required to take into consideration under the Indiana code. They have to meet those five requirements, all five requirements, or we can't approve it. It's yeah. black and white. And if they meet them, we have to approve it. Right. Yeah. Regardless of, I mean, if they meet the requirements, they meet the requirements. Okay, right until, now. until the next meeting, they can't have no campers and no events or stuff out there, right? They can have, public. They can have, yeah, brand. Have the public, they can have yes. their friends out there. Yeah, well, I'm just like your kids. Yeah. But no, they can, they, they, no, nothing business related. That is correct, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we have approved. Okay. okay. Motion made and properly seconded to continue it until next month. Correct? Correct. Has Carrie made the motion and... and I second it. Fisher, second. Okay, and now you want to roll call. That's correct. Carrie? Yes. Bill? No. Uh, Mr. Fisher? Yes. Leo? No. Oh. Yeah. What happens now? Let's tie two to two. Okay. Yep, so this means you uh, make a decision. Who does? Well, the motion didn't carry to table it, so you can't table it. Okay. So, as it stands right now, the, the, the vote was tied, so the motion didn't carry to table, to, to table it till next month. So, there's going to be some more discussion, I'm sure. And then we'll have to see if there's another motion that's made and, and properly seconded and voted on and voted in. Yep. And just to be aware is then the vote has to be, the way it's set up, is that it has to be a vote of, there's five members on the board. So it has to have three votes in favor of or three votes against approving the, okay, against uh, the voting on the, uh, uh, the motion. Here's, where, here's the tricky part, because the motion was an unfavorable recommendation still makes my head spin at times, doing this almost 20 years, is that because the motion was unfavorable, okay, a yes vote, okay, three yes votes on the part of the zoning board would mean that it is rejected. Four unfavorable, uh, three unfavorable votes means that the, okay, the use was not rejected. So it's kind of opposite thing the way that's set up. And we'll remind people as much as we need to as we go through this. Because, like I said, the motion was unfavorable. So the board can either, the zoning board can either accept the unfavorable recommendation or they can overturn the unfavorable recommendation. Well, don't we make our, uh, we've always just made our own. Yeah. I mean, really, I understand that they sent us an unfavorable recommendation, but. Um, in the past, if it were a okay. if it were a dog kennel, <laughs> we would I would say you know I move to <laughs> okay. Bill would be upset, yeah. but I would say I move to approve the special exception okay. regardless of what the area plan sent to us. Is that correct? You would make a motion. Yes, I would move to approve right. the special exception regardless of what area plan sent. Yeah. Correct. Because it's your opinion. Because are we voting? Does We're not. We don't even have a motion yet. So. Uh, are you voting on their vote, or are you voting on yeah, because, the special because, exception? Yeah. I. Yeah, because. I think that you're voting on the exception. Okay. Because okay, I guess an that is the, yeah. Because I guess an argument for that is because when it comes to special exception, the the recommendation. What is adopted their by Fayette County yeah, their for the recommendation, recommendation is not required under Indiana Code. Right. Exactly. They just give their recommendation, and then the, and then we just do, uh, and then, then we you just do your vote. Yeah, we just do. Okay, our so own, you make the recommendation. Our own motion. Too. Okay. Yes. All right. 
All right. Well, then, since this is, I'm assuming, and now we're back to questions, comments, that okay. kind of. Um, I have a question for the petitioners, um, and I know this may not matter in anybody else's mind, but for your, is one dependent on the other? The camping versus the small events, do you feel like you, um, to me, because of, I guess I'll get, I'll explain why I'm asking that. Because of the, the, the limited or potential limited parking spaces there, if they're all being used by camp folks, then how are you going to accommodate small events? And maybe that's not our, I mean, I guess I'm, that's where I'm coming from on, do you need both of them? Or are you asking for both of them in a potential situation? That's my question. I'll try and answer as best as Yeah, yeah. So do you need it or are you just asking because it may happen? I don't know that there's a need for either. Would I like both? Yes. And we've discussed in the site plan there are spots for campers. Separate mm -hmm. I spots. did see those, yes. Yes. And there is also discussion that and again, I believe our events will be small and they will be more apt to daytime. And then even if somebody wants to schedule an event and I have a bunch of campers, they will have to work together. Somebody wants to have a larger event and I already have campsites full, I may have to turn that event down and vice versa. If I have an event that's going to run into the evening and somebody wants to book campsites, I may have to turn those campsites down. I've never done a campground in assembly hall, so there will be learning curves, and that would be one of them. My other question is um, <coughs> partially for Bill, um, given a Always. current situation. Um, it, does all this lie in the floodplain? Okay, yeah, it does lie in the floodplain, which is where the actual, and I spoke with uh, Ms. Merrick about that. Because if any actual development of any structures, that would then have to go through a floodplain permit. So if they're going to build something, they would have yeah, to get I think, something. I think uh, you would have to, I mean, if this is a... Yeah, a see if you're going to build, it, build, it, if you're going build a shovel. If you do any, if you pick up a shovel, call DNR. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we both have other property in the flood zone. I've yeah. dealt with FEMA. Yes. 40 acres yeah. on yeah. Blue River. Yeah. 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 So we're both familiar Quite with it. Very the flood plane. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the development of any structure itself, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, because we did have that discussion. Yep. Yeah, any any shelter structure, something like that. I just don't I don't feel comfortable voting I don't I mean I, I will do what I have to, but I don't feel comfortable voting on the camp portion without a if we're gonna get a, a better site plan, I, I don't feel comfortable voting without it. Okay. All right. All right. So, any other quim comments or questions by other members? I have a question. Well, yes, sir. You, you guys, I heard you guys saying that, um, you know, if you have campers out there or whatnot, that you guys are going to monitor that. There's no house. You don't have a house up. So, what are you going to do? You're going to pitch a tent up. We do have a house. You do have it. But yes. I thought it was not livable. No, it's well, very livable. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> and this depends on who it is because yeah. it, it's zoned yeah. residential. Yeah. So if, if there's, if you have an event or you have, let's say you have a single camper, one person, you guys are going to stay out there all night long to make sure nothing goes wrong. I'm not leaving my place with somebody camping. I think I'm responsible for anything that happens out there right. to these guys. So. It'd be like me inviting somebody out and saying, "Here's my place. I got to go to work. See you later." Well, I mean, right. unless, unless I'm. Well, I, I think somebody. some of their concern is who's going to be out there and who's going to well and technically I, babysit. Basically monitoring. I understand that, and that's <clears throat> we are looking for a. We're not looking for a pay lake. We're not looking for a, a open drive-in all. Right. We want to provide a high. Basically, what we're looking to get is a high-end campground clientele that have nature and other things, peace and quiet. And, and I have property in Morristown that I rent to people with big RVs and mm -hmm. motor homes to store. Right. And, and those people aren't people that go out and just go wandering around right. and bring guns and shoot and, and right. they're not crazy people. They're, 
engineer at Roche. Uh, these are very well educated people that that's the clientele we're looking for. And, and I think Fayette County in, I don't understand and I'm not trying to get a grasp on it, but I think Fayette County marketed right has a lot to offer to tourism. And I think they're, they're lacking it. I have a question for Mrs. Showrunner, right? Yes. Um, the front of your property faces the property that And I can see it all. And you have a patio out there. I was out I there today. A, and I, I have a deck on a the front. Big deck of my on the front. House. And my so. yard is, my front yard's not real big, and you just cross the road and you're on their property. property. And so the, yeah. I, I was out there today. I, uh, I know that. I just wanted to hear her say it. Now, your property, those campsites, because I don't have a campsite site wrapped to, with me, or I don't know if we was ever issued one. Yeah, yeah. okay. But there you uh, go. they're going to be right across right from in my front her, door. Her, I no, 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 no. I'm asking them a question. Oh, okay. okay. Right, thank Sorry, you. That's okay. All right. So those campsites, are they going to be right across the road from us? They're well over the 100 feet. Right. And then we would also be okay. very happy to provide more screening than what's already there to well, provide privacy. Because yeah. that, that's one of the requirements for the, uh, the public camp is to have the year-round uh, vegetative screening. Right. It's effective year-round. And, and I know, I just want to remind everybody that there's five different uh, sections that they have to meet, but we can't approve it. If they meet those five, like Kerry said, we have to approve it. So if there's any one of those five that they don't meet, we can't. That's that's the reason why these rules are right. So I just wanted to let everybody know that part. So if you if we do end up tabling this for any reason, it would be some be to your advantage to get a copy of this and see those five things and you know they explain their part, their thoughts on how they met them and some of the other people have explained where you don't think they did. And that's where the Board of Zoning comes in, that we have to make that vote based on the testimony. And like earlier, one of the gentlemen said that, you know, you wasted your time. You didn't waste your time because we all heard that testimony and it affects our decision whenever we get to do it. Because, you know, we have, we, we have your thoughts and their thoughts in our mind of what we feel like is right. And we don't really get a decision. It's not our opinion. It's those five statues that we have to go by, and that's that's just the rule. Okay. One thing I wanted to say, you cannot get an RV on the, to come all the way around in front of the pond there because there's not the road's not wide enough. Uh, yeah. I was out there today, and I, I looked at the property. I would I wouldn't agree with that, but that's. I mean, I'm talking about the road that comes right between the pond and the house. Yeah, I was back there. There's so, not enough room yeah. to get an RV through there. You know, that's, and, and that's something that, you know, we look at whenever they, they vote on the, the uh, outdoor area part. But this here, we're looking more at the at these five rules whenever we do vote, if we do vote tonight. Any other comments? Yeah. Did you have a question or a comment? I thought you were going to ask one. No. Mm -hmm. Any more? Okay. Uh, is anybody else? But I guess it would be fair if anybody out there has another question. Okay. I was wondering about with a swimming pool, you have to have a fence around a swimming pool. What's going to keep children away from? It, it's not required for that lake. Pardon? It's not required for a lake. Yeah, I didn't know about a lake. Yeah, a, a, pond, a, yeah. a pond, yeah. But I mean, that's we just have to go by the statutes. The statutes, yeah, the state statute says that if you have a swimming pool, you have to have a fence around it. You're, you're correct on that. Okay. Looking for any kind of motion. Oh, I'm sorry. How about the oh. S when you come off the six off of forty four and six fifty west? How about that S curve bringing campers in that way? There's been a lot of accidents on that S curve, just cars. Right. And that and that's something that 
we as a board are going to take that into consideration. I appreciate you bringing it up. Okay. Um, you, you oh, have, I've got it. Is, is no. this year-round camping? <coughs> I would turn that over to you. Yes. Yes. It, it, I don't believe we'll have year-round tent campers, but we have self-sustaining RVs that have means to heat or cool as they feel necessary. If it's December and they want to... We have a tent camper that wants to tent in December, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? I think we're yeah, they, they mentioned that. Yes, they will. They will be there. If someone's there, yeah, one of them will I be there. I don't see anybody down there. No, someone will be there at the time when some, when there is a camper. Uh, well, it, obviously, yeah. if they if they get this approved, they're planning on it being a business, and that's that's our responsibility. they're going to have to be there every day. If we, if we make that part of the yeah, Mr. White said that that would be the case. Yes. yes. As long as there's campers, we can leave if there's no campers. Correct. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll have an armed guard at the gate. <laughs> but does that mean they're going to store the campers there in the wintertime? Four people. We're not. No. That's what my place in Morristown is for. No, no, no. Okay, they would not be allowed to have permanent storage year-round for it. Yeah, it's, it's not like uh, someone's parking something down there at Robinson's campground down on the river. That's not what we want. No, no. Um, as far as statute, state statutes are concerned, I understand that, that there really are no Fayette County statutes in regard to campgrounds, but you go by the state statutes. Is okay, that correct? now, okay, now what what we have is we have the zoning side of it. The campgrounds are covered by the state of Indiana, as far as that. Uh, you know, Department of Health, that's who actually licenses campgrounds. Now, if someone falls under that, is the, uh, say, a, the, li the licensing point for the state, it's kind of moot. But the, the question I have is in regards, they're talking five campsites, correct? Mm -hmm. They're also talking tent sites. How many tent sites are you talking? There, there's a total of five sites, ma'am. Five tent total sites? Total of five sites, period. 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 Yes. So they can't have five campers and then five tents. They could have. That, no, no, you're right there. But they could. There's five locations. And on each location, so site A, could have one RV or two tents. So, so, so they could, theoretically, if they were completely maxed out, the most they would ever have there at any one time would be... Ten tents or five camps or five RVs. Not fifteen, not five and ten, not a max of ten tents okay. or. My understanding from reading Indiana state statutes in regards to camping campgrounds is that if you have less than ten, nine nine or less, it's not as restrictive. If you have ten. Yeah. It requires an engineered plan. Yeah. But they only have five yes. campsites. But the potential of ten camp camp you don't call that was my un, uh, let me let me refer, that was my understanding from something that I heard her say. I did have not yeah. verify okay. that with the petition with the uh, what was written in we here. Need, we need to know that. I okay. don't disagree. Yeah. I want to make sure that my words aren't used against either. For right. or against, I, that right. was something I had overheard her say that I was trying to clarify. Okay. But the, they are going to have just five campsites, period. So you count one campsite can have two tents. Yeah. But it's, a camp, it's one campsite. Because campsite. That's, the, that's the Indiana State uh, right. standard. I'm sorry. State, that's the Indiana State Parks uh, standard, correct? Two, yes. Two the tents on one campsite. Park standards. It's not like. That, that, if I went to Brookville Laker Mound State Park and I rented a site, they would allow two me tents. two tents. Yes. So it's still one, one campsite. campsite. Two one, tents. One campsite with this two tents. Yes. All right. Okay. Ready for a motion? Pass motion. I've asked for a motion. <coughs> Anybody have a motion? I have a motion to approve the area plan's recommendation for uh, 
Okay. And not not recommendation. Okay. Here's Unfavorable an unfavorable recommend. Here's a, here's unfavorable vote. To, basically, you're saying to. Okay, not approve the petition, the special exception. Right for the campsites. Okay. You're saying because no on the campsite. That's right. That's the simplest way to put it. I like that. Yeah. Either yes or no. You want it there or you don't. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Ready, Bill? Yep. Just to clarify, you say yes, you're saying no to the petition. Yep. If you say no, you're saying yep. yes. Yeah, so uh, basically, <laughs> yeah. Leota, Leota's actual was to vote yes on the unfavorable recommendation. Right. So a yes vote says no to the petition. Yes, yeah. correct. Okay. I wanted so, to clarify. So okay. this, this vote is for the camping only. That's correct. correct. Yes. has nothing to do with special occasion. <coughs> correct. Right. Right. That's been tabled. Okay. We can't vote on that part. Ready? Ready. Carrie Steele? No. Bill Crawford? Yes. James Fisher? Yes. Uh, Leo King? Yes. Okay. Well, it's two to two, which means that. Nope. Oh, it's three to one. Okay. Okay. Who will vote it? He voted yes. I voted yes. Okay. You voted yes in favor of the yes. saying no. Okay. Okay. The Oda voted yes. <laughs> See, I told you, it confuses me. Go, go slow, Bill. Okay. So Leota voted yes. Okay. Carrie voted no. Because of the site plan issue. Yep. Okay. Three to one. Okay, so it's three to one to reject. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Do I, do I give you a chance to ask? I mean, what is the basis of what's your ground your base grounds for saying no? What what requirements have we okay. not met? All right. Yoda, if you would explain what they have not met for you. The unfavorable recommendation is because with the pond, there's really not enough space for five campsites when you wind up with only land only. And uh, there's five acres and two acres is pond, so you only have three acres left. And the requirement from the state was? Five acres. Five well, the, five, the zoning code is five acres total lot size. Right. Including the All the land, including, including the pond, is included in that five acres. Yeah, but my, I still think that you need that much space if you're going to have five campsites. You need the five acres, and you've got a whole bunch of that covered up by water. Okay. Uh, is that based? How big of campsites do you yeah, that, think no, that we I, might have? Because yeah, okay. you know, right. can, can we define the campsite? Okay, Leo. Okay, now with those, with these, with the five, with the criteria, which one is it that you feel it doesn't meet? Can we just enter the voting sheets? Wouldn't it be easier? Yeah. 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 Well, yep. I think given their request that you should use the voting sheets. Yeah, you should provide them our voting sheets. I. Under the Freedom of Information Act, I think that's no, easier. Yeah. That gives you time to compose right. your thoughts, and, and okay. it gives them an opportunity to review it. Yeah, review it, and also the uh, then if they then also to appeal to the courts within appeal. thirty days. And uh, if you feel it's a wrong decision, there's also a thirty day appeal period. Essentially, what I just asked them to do was at the end of every meeting, okay. we have a voting sheet, yeah. and we we'll write why we voted the way we did. Wait, is it based on those five those or six five criteria? Mm -hmm. You'll specifically state Say, which this is criteria why and, and why it, yes. why you, why it did not meet the criteria. Yeah, and I think they probably are intending on appealing, so that's probably the best yeah. way to mm -hmm. go forward. Yeah. Yes. Yep, that's yeah. But, but as of now, it has been rejected, and they'll have the right to appeal. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and they have a right to see everything. And so, everybody, please make sure I have uh, clearly written. Uh, they, they have to take that to the court? <coughs> yeah, it's the court. The commission. No, it's the court. The commissioners have nothing to do with this. It's, uh, it's, it's a court system appeal. So this, uh, this board here has rejected that portion of it totally. But they have the right to appeal based on 
how we answered these questions. Whether or not they met the le whether or not they met the legal requirements to uh, the decision. So, so if you feel that uh, they did not make a legal decision under the zoning code, there's your right to appeal. All right. All right. So that's the end of that part of the public hearing, and we're on to the director's report. I make a motion to accept the director's report. Second. We have a motion made and properly seconded to accept the director's Second. report. We made a motion Carry. and carry second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Right. I second it. We've got a motion made and probably a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed?